Hey guys, welcome to a new video. After the video about 5 volt individually addressable Cobb LED strips, let's take a look at some 24 volt variants, including one that's IP68 and one that's RGBW. How are these different from their 5 volt counterparts? Well, let's see. First off, if you haven't seen my previous video about higher voltage LED strip, I recommend you go watch that before or after this video, since it will explain a few things going on with the strips we are going to look at today. And just quickly, everything in this video is again running off of a Quinn LED Dig Octa connected to a Meanwell UHP-500-24 power supply this time providing lots of clean and stable 24 volt power. The Quinn LED Dig Octa system is a ESP32 based controller with up to eight ports with advanced features such as an external antenna or built-in ethernet connection and combined with a power board makes for a complete solution able to drive five volt up to 24 volt addressable LED strips and it comes pre-flashed with WLED out of the box. Right, we're going to start with the strip I made a dedicated video about, and that's the Cobb 24 volt addressable RGB 720 LEDs a meter strip. This strip has, since it was released, become kind of my benchmark strip in regards to ease of use, brightness, and color vibrance, and I've given it my own nickname and I call it Addressable Neon. As a quick rehash, this strip comes with 5 cm addressable zones, which gives it 20 zones per meter, or 100 zones per, five, per, per full 5 meter or 16 feet of strip. So, that first strip, that 720 LEDs per meter number, how do they get to that number? Well, for this strip, each meter has 20 zones, and each zone has 36 color diodes inside of them. So, each zone has 12 red, 12 green, and 12 blue diodes. If we calculate that up, that's 36 diodes times 20 zones for one meter, and we get to the 720 LEDs per meter number. So technically, this number is correct, but not in the way we've usually used it. Normally, we count 50-50 style LED packages as a single LED, while that contains the three RGB diodes. If we follow the same logic, we'd call a traditional 60 LEDs per meter strip a 180 LEDs per meter strip, or we would call this Cobb strip not 720 LEDs per meter, but a 240 LEDs per meter strip. Whatever the case and kind of skewed terminology, this 720 LEDs or 720 diodes per meter strip is quite a high density for sure. So while technically they are correct, the individual diodes aren't in a package together and they count them as individual LEDs, it can be kind of misleading at first glance. All right, the first new strip I'd like to show is this IP68 rated variant of it. Or well, that's what I hoped it would be, but it's slightly different than I thought it would be. The original addressable neon strip does not have any water rating, so it's strictly for indoor usage. So an IP68 waterproof rated version would be really nice. But as you can probably already see immediately from this shot, they look quite different. So not just the waterproofing changed. Although I love the way they have diffused the strip as a widely diffused surface. Sadly, they also dropped the amount of LEDs or rather zones per meter. Instead of having 20 addressable zones per meter, it only has 10 addressable zones per meter, making the zones 10 centimeters wide a piece. And you can clearly see what this does in regards to resolution versus the non-waterproof version. This is something to take into account. Other things I'd like to mention is that it's also less bright, partly because of the diffusion, but also since it just uses a lot less power, meaning less brightness in that sense. Now, I'm not sure why they did either of these things, both the less zones, but also the lower amount of brightness, 
maybe it would get too hot inside, inside of the silicone sleeve otherwise. I don't know. This is currently the only waterproof version that I know of, so use it as is. I do believe it's still well suited for very long length projects because of the power usage numbers and being 24 volt, so minimal voltage drop for those long stretches of distance and being IP68 rated, it can go directly outside. Okay, second strip I'd like to show, and I think a lot of people have been waiting for this one, is an RGBW variant of the 720 LEDs per meter strip. And well, it's here and it actually looks quite good, but it also has some of its own quirks to take into account. As you can see, now that I've added it to the comparison shot, it also has a little bit less zones than the original RGB version, where the zones on the original were five centimeter wide, on this RGBW variant, they are now seven centimeter wide. This means you now have 14 zones per meter instead of the 20 for the RGB variant. Partly this is because they had to squeeze in another set of LED diodes, but each of those diodes is still the same size, so the sections or zones automatically become physically wider. This has two downsides really. The larger and thus less amount of zones per meter, as I just mentioned, but also that each color diode is now spaced further apart to intermix all the colors in the same segment. Sadly, this is visible when displaying single, but especially dual colors in the sense that it has less of a neon look to it versus the benchmark RGB variant. It's not a huge problem, but depending on the look you are going for, these might actually look a bit better when diffused where the RGB version didn't need it as much. The amount of light output per color is also a bit less versus the RGB version, but certainly not bad. It's just not the brightest like the RGB version is. There is good news though. If you're looking to also have decent whites while keeping addressable RGB, this is now basically one of your only options. It has decent colors and actually good white LEDs. I have measured it personally using my spectro radiometer, radio meter, whatever, and the results are good. It achieves a decent CRI 90 level with a fair R9, so it means it's actually usable light for generic main lighting tasks. R9 is the color red, which is the hardest for LEDs to produce correctly. I would still opt to use a proper high power analog LED strip if white light is your main use case, but other than that, these are now very usable where no other RGBW type addressable LED strip before really was suitable for these kind of purposes. Those were generally CRI 70 with horrible red colors in the white diode, not suitable for normal or main lighting tasks. This new Cobb RGBW strip uses up to 35 watt for the dedicated white for the full five meter strip. And those are fair levels, but still it's no comparison whatsoever versus the 28.8 watt per meter CRI 95 analog strip like I use in all of my studio here to light myself. All in all, I think this RGBW variant certainly has its place though. I kind of wish it had smaller and there's more zones to make the animations prettier, but I think this is the best they can currently do with the technologies available. And if you want both RGB effects and a decent white in a single strip, it's basically the only one out there right now. All right, that concludes the RGB and RGBW Cobb variants that I know of that are available in 24 volt. I do also have some 12 volt variants that I've tested, but I generally tend not to show or use those. They either have bigger or the same size zones as the 24 volt addressable cop strips and are less powerful while at the same time using more amps, thus causing more voltage drop. If we can have five centimeter zones with 12 volt or 24 volt, I'd always choose the 24 volt version. Another option I'd like to highlight is that if you do indeed want to run high quality white light next to having cool RGB effects and such, maybe consider adding some dig to analog boards in your otherwise digital LED lighting setup. 
I created this board for exactly such purpose, to add high quality white light to digital LED setups. You can use it on a separate channel on your Dig Quad, for instance, or Dig Octa, like we're using in this video, and have a few of them in a daisy chain in the spots where you need high output and or high quality whites. That way, you don't need to compromise the RGB addressable strip you use just to get decent whites also. You can just add it using the Dig to Analog board. I'm also going to do a dedicated video about addressable white LED strips in the future. But as you can already guess from me having created this dig to analog board option, the situation still isn't great. But yeah, dedicated video for addressable white LED strips, hopefully soon. Back to 24 volt addressable cop strips, where my previous video about 5 volt cop strip clearly showed that these are best suited for short distance projects where you need high resolution, these 24 volt are basically the opposite. Because these are all 24 volt, they suffer much less from voltage drop than their 5 volt cousins. With that comes the downside of less resolution, but generally once things get longer, that also means they are somewhat further away, and that again plays well with the lower resolution these have. That also has an upside. Since you shouldn't run more than 600 LEDs per data channel, if the strip only has 100 zones per 5 meter, that means you can run 30 meters without running into that limit. And, for instance, this RGBW version is now a great compromise strip in the sense that it can do RGB effects, or even white effects, and also provide actual usable white lighting in one strip. To round it off, if you'd like to learn more about power injection for longer length projects and how to tackle that, make sure to watch my dedicated LED strip power injection video which covers 5 volt, 12 volt, and 24 volt projects using a lot of these strips and how to calculate those before even starting your project so you can choose the best strip to use. All strips shown in this video are compatible with my Dig Uno, Dig Quad, and Dig Octa system boards as controllers, and also all the strips used have been updated in my real world power usage sheet so you can calculate with them for your own projects. And last, of course, they're all linked in the video description using an affiliate link if you'd like to pick one up and help me out at the same time. All right, that's it again. Thank you so much for watching. This video was a long time coming, but it took me a while to get the information to order correctly. And it, there was some several split off videos that have since been released. Maybe, uh, maybe hit that subscribe button if this type of content interests you. And I'll try to keep you updated with the newest, interesting addressable LEDs on the market and how to use them properly. Thanks for watching. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye.